What's up guys, it's me Jeremy. There's a ton of really old cards in Hearthstone that a lot of people have maybe never seen or even heard of, and some of these cards actually kept the same art and name as they got changed, but the abilities and stats got just completely demolished into something else. And so they essentially did become completely different cards. Still though, taking a look at these cards can be really fun and also gives a lot of insight onto where the game came from and where it could potentially go in the future. So today we're taking a look at some removed cards that you might not have ever known existed in Hearthstone. First up on our list, it's the original version of Freezing Trap, which actually did quite literally freeze a minion. The old version of the card cost 2 mana and would freeze a minion for 2 turns when it attacked, rather than returning it to its owner's hand and making it cost 2 mana more. This is definitely a really interesting effect and maybe fits the name of the card a little bit better, but it definitely wouldn't belong in the Hunter class. Hunter doesn't normally get any freeze effects, and it's not like there's a secret class that also has freezing cards, since that's pretty much what Mage actually is. The literal freezing trap definitely seems like a lot more of a Mage card, and that's probably also why Blizzard replaced it with the current freezing trap in a later alpha patch. But it's a bit tricky to figure out how good Literal Freezing Trap was compared to the current version today. There's definitely some scenarios where one is maybe better than the other for each card honestly, you know. Obviously you don't want 9 plus costing mana minions to cost 2 more. You'd rather have them get frozen while your charged creatures would probably, you would rather have them bounce back to your hand. Maybe the creatures with battle cry bounce back to your hand rather than just sit on the board. Overall, the current version of Freezing Trap that's in the game today is probably stronger overall since it is a pretty significant tempo swing, but both cards are definitely still quite strong when they hit big minions and a little bit worse when they hit smaller ones. Still though, this was a pretty interesting card design, it just didn't fit all that well into Hunter, and freezing for two turns is a little bit of a clunky mechanic as well, so it'd be tricky to kind of design that and separate that from freezing for one turn too. Next up on our list, it's the original version of Anixia, which had kind of like a flame leviathan effect, but for each card that you actually drew. Anixia still cost 9 mana and was an 8-8 creature, but the card text instead read, when you draw a card, deal 2 damage to all characters. Now this is definitely a really cool card design, but it's kind of tricky to see how it compares to something like Baron Geddon. To be honest, this version of Anixia is probably not that good. You know, it deals damage to all characters, meaning it deals damage to itself, it deals damage to your face, all of your minions as you draw cards as well, and since it costs 9 mana and triggers stuff when you draw, it's a little bit difficult to get it to go off at the end of your turn, kind of like what Baron Geddon does. This card maybe would slot well into Priest since it would work well with stuff like Power Word Shield, and you can heal your own minions anyway so that they wouldn't get blown up by Anixia. In other classes, it's a little bit hard to see Anixia being all that good though. It is essentially just a giant wild pyromancer that has to survive a turn before you can start doing stuff with it. And Anixia got changed to its current version in an early alpha patch, and although it still doesn't see a ton of play, it fits well into some stuff here and there when they pop up, and it's definitely a better card than the original version. Next up, we have the original version of Sylvanas Windrunner, which actually had like a super crazy effect that's totally different to what it has today. The original Sylvanas was a 5 mana 5-5 five, five creature that had the effect of a battle cry. Discard your hand and draw 5 3-3 three, three skeletons. Now this is a seriously insane effect since you're discarding your whole hand and drawing skeletons instead. But there's definitely a few cool things that you could do with it. You know, obviously if your hand's empty when you cast Sylvanas, you just get to draw a bunch of free 3-3s. Three now that's not an insane onboard play since Sylvanas and the Skeletons are both pretty average for their mana cost, but it does net you a ton of value and just fuel to help grind out your opponent. The only problem with that is that aggro decks don't really want value, and anything that's not an aggro deck isn't going to want to discard their hand, because they'll usually have like a really large amount of cards in it, so this version of Sylvanas I guess it does have some synergies with some of the discard themed cards that have been released since, but you would probably just end up overdrawing most of the time if you cast Sylvanas with Malchazar's Imp. Still though, this version of Sylvanas is definitely much weaker than we have today, so it's kind of good that we got the current version of Sylvanas over two patches that changed the effect and then later increased the mana cost, but Skeletal Sylvanas definitely isn't a terrible card, and it would be pretty awesome to try to play with it for a while. And the next card that we're looking at is of course the Skeletons made by Sylvanas, which are of course 3 mana 3-3s. Three One interesting thing worth noting is that this art for the card has actually gone completely unused so far, but if we ever get another card that maybe makes Skeletons, maybe we'll get to see it 
come into the game into the future. Up next we have the original version of Mind Control Tech, and it was actually probably a lot more overpowered than the current version. The old version used to read, Battle Cry, swap this minion with a random enemy minion. Imagine all the times your opponent has had a single minion, a Ragnaros, a Tyrion, or a Deathwing on the board, or something just super strong, you know. How crazy would it be to just play this, troll them completely, and just absolutely ruin everything? And even in scenarios where your opponent maybe has a bunch of small minions and one high value target, it wasn't that hard to maybe use AoE removal to kill off some of your opponent's minions, and then now you could set up a really good mind control tech. I mean, this version of the card is pretty much like Sylvanas' effect today, except it's a battle cry, which is way better, and you only pay the small price of giving your opponent a 3-3 creature. Honestly, it's really not surprising at all that this card was changed to the current version in an alpha patch, because swap control tech would probably would have just been two of in every deck unless the meta was really token heavy or something, but honestly this card would have just been insane. Moving on, we're taking a look at one of the original versions of Conceal, which gave a minion stealth permanently. Perma Conceal cost zero mana and let you give one of your minions stealth that would last forever. Now obviously if the minion attacks or if they deal damage with an ability, the stealth gets deactivated, but there's quite a lot of minions that this would be just honestly so insane with. Although the card didn't exist at the time and isn't exactly playable in Rogue, Malganus is a great example of why giving something permanent stealth is just ridiculously overpowered. And Blizzard actually took that ability away from Master of Disguise as well because they felt that it limited the design space for the cards that they could create. Still though, the old version of Conceal was definitely a really sweet card and had some crazy combos with things like Gadgets and Auctioneer until it was changed to its current version over several patches later on. Up next we have the original version of Captain Greenskin, which actually used to draw you cards. The original effect read, whenever you attack with your hero, draw a card, and it was a 5 mana 5-5 five, five minion, as opposed to the 5 mana 5-4 five, minion it is today. Now with this ability, it's pretty much just a rogue or druid class card since they can use their hero power to make their hero be able to attack and thus draw a card. Some other weapon classes might have played it too, although it's probably not that consistent in a class that relies on weapons to attack, but druid and rogue would definitely have loved to use this card. 5 mana 5-5 five, five is definitely pretty solid stats, and while you would maybe need to wait until turn 7 to use the effect, rogue especially can just leave a dagger up the turn before and draw a card with green skin on curve. And this version of Captain Greenskin is definitely way stronger than the current version that's in the game today since it's a very strong body, provides card advantage, but nonetheless Captain Greenskin was changed to his current version in the closed beta. Moving on, we're taking a look at the original version of Fan of Knives, which is actually quite a lot like Lightning Storm today. The first version of the card dealt 1 to 2 damage to enemy minions instead of dealing 1 damage and drawing a card. And this is a pretty interesting change on the effect, and while it's probably worse than the current version of Fan of Knives actually because it doesn't draw you a card, it definitely would have been really cool with spell powers and could potentially set up some really big board clears. Still though, Blizzard likely changed this card because they wanted the RNG damage spells to stay in classes like Shaman with things like Lightning Storm, Crackle and stuff, rather than Rogue which doesn't have any of those effects. Still though, the old fan of Knives is definitely a pretty interesting card despite getting changed to its current version over the course of two alpha patches, and it definitely wasn't that broken, at least not compared to some of the other cards on this list. And for the next card that we're taking a look at today, it's the original version of Wild Pyromancer. Now this version of Wild Pyro actually did damage to one random enemy every time you cast a spell instead of dealing damage to all minions. Now that's pretty interesting actually since this kind of card is definitely better for things like Tempo Mage since it was essentially just a mini flame waker, but it's definitely a lot worse for things like Priest where maybe you heal the Pyromancer back or try to use it as an AoE board clear. Both versions of this card are definitely actually quite strong though and constructed playable, but it's interesting that Blizzard decided to go with an AoE board clear effect with Wild Pyromancer since it did end up changing a lot of how Hearthstone developed and it affected a lot of metas quite significantly. Blizzard changed Pyromancer to its current version in an early alpha patch, but both versions of the card are quite interesting and just super sweet. So those are some of our thoughts on some old cards that used to exist on the game that eventually got removed. So which ones were your favorites? Definitely let us know in the comment section below, and it looks like that's going to be it for me. If you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like, subscribe if you want. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.